Martin, thank you so much for joining us here today. Thanks for having me. My first question is, I want to find out how do you find the voices for your characters that you, some, that you play? Um, mainly I just use my intuition. Like, I've found over the years of doing this that when I try and create something that's, you know, too far removed for myself or a strain on my voice box and then I book the job, it's like, it's a difficult experience. So I, I, I try and always keep it within my range. But yeah, I think when you read the script, you know, you get a sense of, of how you should play it. Do you like workshop the character from there or is it more what the director is telling you? N yeah, not so much. So if I'm just auditioning for a role, um, I'll just have a play around with it. You know, you, I, I find usually the dialogue will dictate where my choice will go. Um, but then yeah, but when I'm in the booth, for the most part, I listen to the directors. Has there been a character that you've created the voice for yourself? Like you've workshopped it from like just a, a concept from the director or the creator? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I find that the clearer they are with the description of the character, the easier it is to come up with sort of the tone and, and the way in which his, his dialect will roll out. Um, Mozzie from Rainbow Six Siege was very clear on the page. Um, when I read it, I instantly knew who he was. So it wasn't that difficult. It was just more of a laconic version of myself. Um, but yeah, it, it, it'll depend. It, it really does depend on what the brief says and how far removed the character is from myself. You know, if it's, it could be an English character, an American character. Um, so yeah, you just have a play around until you find something that feels right. And then I usually just roll with that. <laughs> nice. Okay, and then how does one actually get into voice acting and then book like continuing jobs, you know, thereafter? Yeah, well, I had an interesting introduction into it. I'd never, I didn't really even know what a voice actor was. Um, I was at drama school back in Australia years ago and my cousin worked at the ABC, which is the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, and she produced radio plays and poetry readings and that type of thing. And she got me in to do a book reading for, a, I think it was a radio, no, I think it was a radio play for something called Cat. And she cast me as the cat. And so I was super excited. I was at drama school at the time and I'm like, yeah, I'm playing this cat. And they're like, oh, well, you know, what do you have to do? So I have to meow in a whole bunch of different ways. And I thought she'd got me because I was so talented and I had this amazing range of meows. And it wasn't until Christmas last year, we were all at, around the lunch table and I was telling one of my little nephews how I got into voice acting. And I retold that story and she kind of stops, all everyone's talking at the Christmas lunch. She goes, hang on, cuz, I only got you to do that role because I couldn't get any professional actors to do it. You know, and so that's how I fell into it. And then, uh, yeah, just one thing led to another and I just, I kept booking, you know, roles here and there. Can you, can you cycle through some, some of the voices that you've done for us? I mean, I could do a meow if you want. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah from so, like so, start to finish career, you can go with. <laughs> well, you know, Mozzie was more of a, he's a little short guy, his, his voice, I, I, I pitched him up a lot and he, he was a lot more energetic, he was like, bullseye, got us a drone, you know? Um, whereas Lucas Riggs, who was a character in Call of Duty, you know, another Australian, he was much bigger, more solid, and uh, I sort of grounded his, uh, his voice in a more realistic, you know, weathered way. Um, I'm trying to think of a Lucas Riggs line. He would say things like, we're not here to fuck spiders. So it'd be a lot, it would be a lot gruffer, uh, you know, a little bit of a husk in the voice. And Okay, and then yeah, lastly, are, are, you are you an, an avid, avid gamer? gamer? I am, yeah. Okay, okay what's, what's your top, top three game? game? Siege. Yeah. I play that the most. I stream on Twitch and, uh, and on Kick. And yeah, Rainbow Six, because a lot of the, the fans of the game would hit me up on socials and, and they told me, you should stream and you should play. So I was really bad when I started, I'm okay now. And then uh, I play a bit of Warzone and um, I'm just about to finish Subnautica. So I usually, they're my two main games, COD and, uh, and Siege, and then I usually have a third on rotation, whatever it may be, you know. Well, I really like horror games. Ah, oh, yes, Five Nights at Freddy. Can't wait for that one. <laughs> you want to hear me scream? Get me playing that game. Yeah. <laughs>
Hey guys, my name's Martin Copping and you are watching Glitched.